Good evening. Good to see everyone here tonight. Expecting a blessing, I hope. Number 443. 443. Oh, Zion, haste. Thy mission high fulfilling. Let's stand. Let's sing. 443. Let's pray, shall we? Heavenly Father, God, that great hymn encompasses so much in our life. It expounds to us the heart of God, that you're not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Thank you for that great love. It expounds the responsibility of the church to give of our sons and to give of our wealth for those that will go as missionaries, and that we would speed them on their way and that we would do all that we could do to get the gospel around the land. And then that great promise that all that we spend, Jesus will repay. And he is faithful at that repayment. And he will give to us more than we could ever ask or think. And he will be no man's debtor. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for our crowd tonight. Lord, how we just are eager to have our hearts touched with, the, uh, with missions, with the country of Thailand. And Lord, we're looking forward to just a sweet blessing. Bless us as we greet one another now in Jesus' name. Amen. Turn on, shake hands. Welcome all those around you. Greet anybody new that you see.
Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Behind me stand some of our young people that were able to go to the Wilds summer camp this past July. And while they were there, they learned many wonderful things from the Lord, made many wonderful decisions for the Lord. And God taught them a song, a song that they have learned and that they want to sing for you tonight. And so they're eager to share with you the joy of the Lord through his song. Would you please welcome our young people? Listen as they sing. just had their audition so you can expect them all in choir next week there we go we'll round out that choir with the youth oh great job great job to see our youth up in front leading in ministry it's hard to get young people to come up and do that i know i'm a teacher and they they just don't want to do it but praise the lord that they did that 439 we've sung this one be song before song for the nations it's a real testimony of what we want to see done, not only in our missionaries, but in each one of us, in our youth, in our adults. And you can never be too old for missions. You can do a short term. You can do anything. So let's stand. Read these words as you sing them. 439. May we be a shining light to the nation.
words to that song, powerful words. I pray that would be a, a true of our church and everyone's heart that is here tonight. I want to make just a couple of reminder announcements that I went by very quickly this morning. Don't forget our Wednesday night Bible study. I'll be finishing a message that started last Wednesday entitled, um, What Does the Bible Say About Trusting the Lord? I had 10 points to that message. I got five of them last week, and I'll get five of them this week. If you missed that message, then you may want to listen to it prior to coming on Wednesday night, and that will help set the stage to be blessed there. Um, of course, we have our dinner on Wednesday night. I trust you're signing up for that and getting tickets and enjoying the fellowship as well. And this will be the last Wednesday night of the Kids for Christ ministry. And then the Awana ministry will pick up on September 7th. And so I know there was registration in the lobby today. I trust that you were able to stop by. After the service tonight, Brother Mike has a Awana leaders meeting only for the returning Awana workers. No new ones. If you're just signed up and you've never worked in Awana, tonight is not the night for your meeting. It is coming up. But if you have been contacted by Brother Mike as a returning worker, then that meeting will take place in the classroom out there off the lobby to my left right after the service. Um, a lot of interest, praise the Lord, in the Discovering God's Vision for your marriage class. That class will begin on Thursday, September 8th. It'll run for 10 weeks. Uh, somebody has asked if there's room. There's always room. So we'll fit you in there and squeeze you in somehow. If God's been laying that on your heart or you have a desire to be in that class, I'm trying to get the whole church to go through it. And pretty soon the pool is narrowing and your name's going to come up. And so um, don't be surprised if you get a little text from me or a phone call that says, hey, have you been to the class yet? And the number one thing you do not want to say to me is, we don't need that dumb class. Uh, because, yes, all of us need the class, all right? Uh, baby shower for Kim Smith on September the 10th. And uh, there's a sign up at the welcome desk. Make sure, ladies, that you sign up for that and be part of that and be a blessing there. Ladies in prayer on September 13th and then moving on in throughout the month of September. I talked about Anniversary Sunday this morning. Missions Month begins next Sunday, and this is where we set aside three weeks as a church to focus on what God would have us to do for worldwide missions and the evangelism of lost nations of people. And so I, I want to encourage you to begin to pray now that God would do a work in your heart this could be the September that God calls you to be a missionary. Not me, Pastor. Ooh, ooh, I would not say that to the Lord. I wouldn't say something like, I could never do, don't say that. Uh, you just say, here am I, Lord, send me. This could be the time that God calls you and your family to the field. This could be the time that God lays a heavy burden of evangelism on your heart. Um, we had a wonderful response last week to my announcement about making sure that your faith promise commitments are up to date. We had a strong faith promise offering last week, and I trust that you'll look at those and make sure no, you'll never be held responsible for that. There's no name. I don't know. Only you know. But you have till the end of September to, to finish the previous year's commitment. And so we want to finish ahead and be blessed as to what God would have us to do for faith promise missions. I, I want to introduce the Salmon family before they come. They're going to sing our offertory. And men, if you'll get ready, we'll have our offering here in just a minute. But it was a joy to spend some time today with Shane and with Katie and with their son Judah. And um, they just uh, blessed Beverly and I in their presence. They love the Lord and they've been called to serve the Lord. I'm excited for you to hear their heart. I'm excited for you to hear the joy of the Lord. That is their strength. And um, we have vetted them, and they are normal people. Okay, I don't, Brother Shane, people think missionaries are not normal people. I watched you. you. You put your food in your mouth. You chewed it. You swallowed it. You got some of it on your shirt. I mean, you're just a normal dude, man, I'll tell you. But God has put a wonderful call upon their life. And so he plays the piano, and they sing, and they're going to sing our offertory. 
Men, come forward. Let the church see our good men right here. These are some fine looking men, aren't they? Now, I, I tease Brother Reuben, okay, over here. And I love him and, and he loves me. He was at my house last night. He's always at our house. Three weeks ago, he had, a, he had a light plate. Two weeks ago, I said, Reuben, if you don't do better, you're not going to take the offering. He got $5. <laughs> Last week, he got to the back, and the poor guy had no money in the plate. So you know what he did? He took a dollar out of his own pocket, and he put it in the offering plate. I, I said, Reuben, switch right here. This is, this is the money aisle right here. He said, no, I'm going to break them down. <laughs> he didn't say any of that. I just love him. <laughs> All right. Heavenly Father, a merry heart that doeth well like a medicine. One of the great joys about our church is that, that not only can we worship together and pray together and grow together, we can laugh together and just have a, a tremendous time. And... Um, I, I really appreciate that about the Sunday night service. The Sunday night service has a merriness to it that no other service has. And uh, what a joy. I do say thank you for our young people and their faithful service. The men taking the offering, the group singing, Ariana playing. And I pray, God, your richest blessing upon them. Lord, I want to pray specifically for a mission's heart for our young people. Some of these young people, I believe you could call to the field. I pray, God, that you, would, that you would just make your call known. Thank you for the wonderful privilege to bring your tithe today. You have been faithful to give us increase. All that we have is because of you. And so, God, we bring back that which belongs to you. And then on top of that, we give offerings just to prove how much we love you and how good you are in our life. Be blessed. You know each heart. You know the cheerfulness of the giver. And I would say this, Heavenly Father. What we do in the area of finance, we do based on the authority of the Word of God. What a joy it is to stand upon your truth. Bless the offering. Bless Shane and Katie as they sing now. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. It's changing me by one. The story of my Savior called me to the wonder of the cross. The gospel changes everything, and it is changing me. The gospel changes everything, the turning point in history, and even now it's changing me, by one, the story of my Savior calls me to the wonder of the gospel changes everything, and it is changing me. You save my soul by your blood, and I'm undone by your great love.
so pretty. I would like to hear it. Go on to what? On that mic and have her use the other one. He's going to sing on my mic. He's going to ruin it. <laughs> Can you do it one more time? That was beautiful. And I heard the gospel changes everything, right? Okay, so here's what you're going to do. You're learning about Plantation Baptist Church that we're a family. So sing a bar or two to make sure I'm satisfied. <laughs> Just a bar or two. Okay. Like the first line. Sure. The, the gospel changes, changes everything. Everybody was smiling, so I was like, maybe they do hear us. I don't know. <laughs> I've got them so trained when missionaries come. We sit, we roll over, we fetch, we do whatever you need to do. The gospel changes everything. Get him on his first word now, because that first word is important. This time it will bless your soul. The gospel changes everything, the turning point in history, and even now it's changing me from who I was. The story of my Savior calls me to the wonder of the cross. The gospel changes everything, and it is changing me. The gospel changes everything, the turning point in history. And even now it's changing me from who I was. My Savior calls me to the wonder of the cross. The gospel changes everything, it is changing me. 
It's a great privilege to be here. It's not often we get to sing a song twice, too, by the way. So I like that. I, it's always a good run through for us. Um, but it is a privilege to be here. We were over in uh, Coconut Creek last year, and we had heard about your church from Pastor Adam Alley, how mission-minded you were and how great the church was here, too. And so it was a privilege to hear we could come and share our ministry uh, here at Plantation Baptist, and we're looking forward to a great evening. Um, we, we had a great morning. Sunday school class was, was awesome, and, uh, and then a great service, too. So we're, we're privileged um, for that. Uh, we want to start this evening off. My, my wife's going to share her testimony. We're going to show our video. I'm going to share my my testimony, and then talk to you a little bit about Thailand. I'll even teach you a couple Thai words before you're done uh, with the evening. Don't want you leaving here saying, Brother Shane never taught us anything about Thai. And so I, I want to share that with you before we're done. Um, before Katie shares her testimony, I wanted to um, preface with the fact that we met in nursery. Um, my grandmother was a nursery lady, and I tried to woo her in nursery, and uh, it didn't work. And, um, and so I, I was saddened by that. I fled the country for many, many years. Um, <laughs> Partly due to my parents surrendering to missions, too, and then they left and took, took us kids, too. But, um, but then we came back, and, and things got a lot better. So go ahead. <laughs> hey, I always tell girls to be choosy, and if he's still living at home, and he doesn't have a job, he's not in school, and he's not looking to change that, maybe you should wait a while. So there you go. 
Um, but I actually grew up in Titusville, Florida, so not too far from here. And I was able, I was just given a huge privilege to grow up in my past. My pastor was my granddad, and my parents led me to the Lord when I was five. So it was a really amazing privilege just to have such a heritage of faith in my family. And with Thailand, Shane will tell you more about it later, but it's very rare if you're out on the streets of Thailand, even to really meet someone who's a Christian, let alone someone who has any other Christian family members or, or maybe not very many friends either that are Christian. So it's a huge privilege if you do have Christian friends and family. Um, and just when I look at my testimony, it's not really this big thing that happened, this one moment where the Lord just said, boom, you are supposed to be a missionary. And the rest of my life, I just knew what he wanted me to do. For me, the way he worked was just one step at a time. And he would give me part of the plan and just ask me to be faithful with that. And so that's what he did all along the way for me. And it kind of started in between ninth and 10th grade. And I know we had some uh, youth in here. Is anybody in ninth or 10th grade that's in here? Oh yeah. Hey, that's a good, good number. So any age, the Lord can speak to you. But that was when he spoke to me a lot about the future. So really be listening as you go to camp, as you go into school. Um, because in between ninth and 10th grade, during the summer, I was on a mission trip to St. Louis, Missouri. And the Lord just used several things on the trip to show me that it does not matter how old you are. You don't know how long you have on this earth. And so he really moved in my heart and led me to surrender to full-time ministry. And you know, I was in ninth grade, I was 14. I really didn't know where that was going to lead me, um, but I was just really excited to see what the Lord would do. And so uh, I also was given another privilege, and that was to go to a Christian school. And I had teachers that poured into my life, and they made a huge spiritual impact on me. And so I thought, well, maybe that's the ministry the Lord wants me to do. It would be to be a Christian school teacher. And I don't know if anyone in here loves English or liked it in school or taught it, Whoa, okay, I have two hands. That's like 200% of what I usually have, maybe more. I don't know. Um, so I am that person. I love English just like you too. Woohoo! Uh, and I'm big on the grammar. I love diagramming sentences, all of those geeky things. I always did the reading. What? Um, so that is like a big thing for me. And I thought, well, maybe the Lord wants me to be an English teacher because I'm sure the problem with the reason why people don't love English is that they just didn't have me to teach them. So let's change this. So I decided to be an English teacher. And I went to Pensacola Christian College and I majored in English education. And during college, the Lord gave me another piece of the plan. And of all places to realize that he was calling me to missions, I was in a history class. So I was definitely a really big geek because some people sleep during history classes. I was like, the Lord was speaking to me. And I had a teacher that was very passionate about missions. And he did what we're all really supposed to do. Whether he was called to the foreign field or not, he was going to live his passion out right where he was. And that's what he did. We were studying world history. And as we studied each country, he would give us statistics for religion in those countries. And he would say, wow, Japan has such a need for Christ. Less than 2% know Christ in Japan. Wow, Eastern Europe, there is so much false religion in Eastern Europe. We've got to go and tell them. And he would continue to do this through all of the countries we were studying. And over the semester, there really wasn't one moment. It was just over the semester, really looking at the facts. The Lord just began to burden my heart for foreign missions and to show me, this is what I want you to be a part of. And so again, I had another step. I was really excited. But then I thought, oh, I have to kind of know what country I'm going to go to. The, the world is huge. And so I was praying really hard about that. And the Lord did not tell me right away. Um, and, you know, if you're about to graduate high school or college, the big question everyone asks is, what are you going to do next? And for me, it was a very hard question because I didn't know. And I just want to tell you, it's okay if you don't know. If the Lord hasn't told you yet, you just need to be faithful where you are. And he'll give you the step next. And so that's how it was for me. I graduated, still praying, Lord, just show me where you want me to go. And I took a teaching position during that time at a Christian school. And during Christmas break, I was home in Titusville to visit family. And this kid I had spurned in nursery, apparently, uh, was back in the States. And he had come back for his master's degree. He was in our hometown as well. Shane was there. And actually, he was kind of better looking than I remembered. And uh, he had a job. He wasn't living at home. So these are all good things. Um, we really hit it off. And, um, and I thought, this, this could really go somewhere. I don't know. But I told my mom, Shane knows that he is called to go back to Thailand. And I still don't know if that's where the Lord wants me. So we prayed for a long time about that. And the Lord did lead us into relationship. Long story short, I was able to go to Thailand for the first time a year later. And that's where the Lord just showed me, this is what 
every step has led up to. This is what I made you for. And it's one thing when you read in your Old Testament about people that worship false idols and that make prayers to false gods, and it's really easy to see them as like, oh, they're the evil people, and that's what evil people do. Um, but it's so different when you go and you realize every day there are people that are so sincere and they're kind-hearted and they just want the best. And they do that every day. And it's not because they're evil people. It's because no one has told them the truth. And so you have people today that went to a temple and they bowed before Buddha and they said prayers even though they know he's not God. And that's what they've been told. And so that's what they do. And they never know for sure what will happen when they die. And so the Lord just broke my heart for them and, and showed me that he wanted me to go and tell them Christ did everything we need on the cross and we can be sure. And so we're excited to do that. And uh, the rest of the story is we got married. We have a little four-month-old boy, Judah, and we're going to be leaving in two weeks. So we're so excited and so excited that we get to share kind of our last appointment with you all telling you about it. Well, I'd love to direct your attention to our video, and uh, then we'll go from there. Thailand, land of the free. Known for its beautiful beaches, tropical weather, delicious food, rich history, ornate temples, and warm hospitality. Thailand is located in Southeast Asia, between Myanmar, Laos, and Cambodia. A country that ranges from the wide open green rice fields to the diverse bustling metropolis. The greatest hope of every Thai person is to live a good life, with the desire of being reincarnated to a higher state and ultimately to attain the state of nirvana, or nothingness. This is done through performing good works and being faithful to the temple and religious traditions. We are Shane and Katie Salmon, and we have surrendered our lives to be missionaries, sent out of Cherry Street Baptist Church to take the truth to the people of Thailand. With the Thai population estimated to reach 70 million by 2015, there is a growing number of people who need to hear the gospel. Most Thais have never even heard of Jesus Christ and are without true hope. At the age of three, I moved to Thailand with my parents, Ricky and Tammy Salmon, as they answered God's call to minister to the Thai people. While serving alongside them, I was able to reach out to many young people through sports camps, English classes, and youth outreaches, seeing many saved and discipled. Our goal is to evangelize the lost, to disciple new believers, and to plant local indigenous Baptist churches while equipping nationals to lead them and to spread the gospel throughout the nation and beyond. Our internship at Cherry Street Baptist Church has given us opportunities to work in many different ministries, and by God's grace, we have seen people saved, baptized, and discipled. We have also worked to train up leaders to take our place in ministry, as we will do with national leaders in Thailand. This time of equipping and preparing for ministry in Thailand has made us eager and excited to use the skills we have learned on the field God has called us to. Though many ties are in spiritual darkness, there is a hunger for finding true peace. The younger generation has begun to question their faith and the traditions that have been passed on, with many claiming Buddhism because they have known nothing else. We believe that the people of Thailand are more ready than ever to hear and accept the gospel. It is our desire to take the truth to them as quickly as possible, but we need your prayers and financial support to fulfill this call. 
please remember to pray for the Salmons, taking the truth to Thailand. kind of gives you an idea of what Thailand looks like. And that's really the whole purpose of a video is to just give you a, a picture. If you haven't visited us in Thailand yet, um, that you'll be able to see kind of what it looks like, what the people look like, what these images, what it, what it means uh, when they're burning incense, what that kind of looks like. And we wanted to just share that with you. Um, uh, before, before I go on, I need to recognize my Aunt Tanya drove up here um, for the service here. You just, just wave, wave there. That's my aunt. Um, and uh, so excited whenever we can have family in the services with us. It's, 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 it doesn't happen often enough. I wish family, we could just take them and travel in a caravan as we go around the country. Um, but we're very thankful for that. And by the way, the youth choir sounded amazing. I thought that was awesome. Um, and you had, you had someone on the piano I was playing too, and that was a, a youth too. And that, that's pretty cool to see. Um, love seeing that. Love seeing uh, young people jump in. When pastor said, uh, it's in preparation for next month, you're, you're starting kind of your missions um, month there, and you got three weeks you're going to emphasize there. And, and I, I, do, I do believe a lot of times before you have a missionary come or before mission, uh, the, the month begins, it's kind of like this, okay, well, I'm going to surrender everything I, I know I can surrender and be safe, and then I'm going to just guard my heart the rest of the time and not really open up. And uh, automatically when pastor said, you know, don't say, not me, Lord, because I, I thought of the song. Um, the song is, please don't send me to Africa. He said, I don't believe I got what it takes. I'm just a man. I'm not a Tarzan. Don't like lions, rivers, or snakes. I'll serve you here in suburbia in my comfortable middle-class life, but please don't send me out in the bush where the natives are restless at night. And uh, I thought that was kind of appropriate for what, what we were getting into, but um, natives wrestle. I don't know about that. And the snakes, yeah, you're going to actually. Missionary sent me a clip today. Bangkok, Thailand, 11 million people eight-foot um, python that they caught there. Uh, and I promised Katie, we're not going to have these in our house. We're not going to have them. And then I get this clip, and I'm like, what are you doing? Um, preparation. So pray for us as we, as we get ready for that. But the point is, we need to be careful what we pray about. And, and are we open to surrendering to whatever God has for us to do? My testimony started, you, you kind of saw a little bit in the video. You saw a picture of me and my brother. We were so small. Um, and uh, my parents did not consult me when they surrendered to missions, partly because I wasn't born yet. They had surrendered to missions already. We came along, and they said they threw us in the car seat and then took us around the country traveling on deputation because they're going to be missionaries to Thailand. Well, we landed in Thailand. I was three years old. My brother was 10 months old. And at that point, uh, it was from then on. I mean, we were in Thailand the whole time and we'd come back once every three or four years. And... Um, I don't know about you, but in Asia, I stand out a little bit. I had blonde, you saw bright blonde hair, blue eyes, and pretty pale skin that to this day can't change. And, um, and I want, I'll, for those of you who have moved before, we, we don't like to stand out, right? We want to fit in. You don't, want to, you don't want to stand out. When you go to a new school or you're starting a new year, you don't want to stand out. You don't want to be the weird kid standing out in the class. Like You want to just kind of fit in and, and not shine just yet. Well, in Thailand, I tried my best, and I could not hide the fact that I was a bright Caucasian in an Asian land, you know? And, um, and people would come up to me, and I would go out and play soccer with them. they invite me to go out and play. I'd go play with the hopes of becoming like them because I wanted to have that beautiful tan skin. And that was not to be had because I'd come back every time. And for those of us that have this, this similar pigment struggle, um, I'd come back beet red, right? And then after that, what happens? You peel, right? You lose that skin. And that's real attractive to people there. And people come up to me, friends would come up and they go, oh, wow, we've never seen that before. Go, oh, good. And they go, but, but don't worry, our lizards do that here too. I go, oh, okay. <laughs> Good. We're practically family. Your lizards do it and I do it. We're good to go. But God gives you grace, right? As you, as you follow the Lord's direction, God gives you grace and helps you adjust. I had a mother who was very sympathetic. My dad, semi-sympathetic with everything. That was, it's okay. You'll be all right. Go out and play. And, um, but my mom really helped us out. And you go through things such as you know, looking a little different from everybody else. Uh, we, we also got to experience food. Now, a large part of missions is accepting that you're going to try some foods that you may not enjoy right off or may not enjoy ever. I mean, that may just be the point you have to come to. But my dad had a firm um, rule in the household. Dad, dad's been a missionary now. Mom and dad have been there now for 25 years. They've planted four works now. Missions is going strong. They're still serving the Lord. Um, but when we were growing up, dad had a rule. He said, if you've never had it once, you'll try it. 
Go, okay, it's ours, food, food. And said, all right, um, so they would, we were at a funeral one day, we were the guest of honor there, we were seated up there, and they serve food before funerals in Thailand. And as a matter of respect, they serve us food, and we get this soup and a tentacle sticking out of the soup. And that's always a sign it's going to be an interesting meal because we look in and it's just this octopus that's just kind of hanging out there. And um, it was dead already, but it doesn't matter at this point. And we're looking at it, and I turned to Dad and I said, I think I've had this before. And uh, yeah, it didn't get past him. <laughs> He's like, no, you haven't. You're going to try. And I was like, oh, OK. So I chew this octopus. And if you're wondering, when do you swallow an octopus? It's like when you swallow gum. There's really not a good time. You just pick a time. And I swallowed that octopus. I finished it. And I said, all right, we are good to go. And my dad turns to the young lady. And to much to my horror, he says, And what he said was, uh, ma'am, would you mind bringing another bowl? My son loved your soup. <laughs> so, OK, OK. So we've had a couple conversations. I'm going to choose what nursing home you end up landing in, what continent you're going to end up on. I'm the oldest, you know. But, but God guides you through that, right? And you, you get funny stories afterwards and unique flavors you get to taste. But God directs you through that. And, and I had a younger sibling. And, and um, as we were growing up, I mean, siblings help you figure out that you're a sinner pretty quick. My parents taught, you know, that, that, uh, that none are righteous, right? None of us are righteous, and we are saved by grace and not of ourselves. Um, and, and what we talked about this morning has to do with that as well. And for me, I recognized at a young age, at six, um, that I was a sinner. I, I recognized that very clearly, and that there was no way, based on my own works, living in a country surrounded by people that depended on their works, um, that I would ever be able to go into heaven. It was impossible because it can't be done by my works and that really none of us are worthy to be saved, but that we realize that God sent his only son to die for us on the cross. And, and I believe it's a message that children can recognize and can believe and trust in Jesus Christ as their savior, as well as people that are turning 98. You know, there's no age limit on this, uh, on this understanding as far as when you understand it. But for me at six, I recognized that and I accepted Jesus Christ as my savior. And at that point, we, were, we had been there for about three years now, and, um, and we continued on, and I lived life in Thailand. And when we come back to the States, at churches much like Plantation Baptist, um, I'd be staying at the table. My job was to pass out prayer cards. So we would pass out these prayer cards, and I was the ninja of prayer cards. Like, nobody get through the door without me like, pff, pff, pff. I mean, everybody's getting a prayer card before you leave. Pray for us, you know? Didn't matter how old I was. As long as I could carry them, I was passing them out. And people would come up to me at the table, and they go, well, Shane, your dad, Brother Ricky Salmon, has done such a great job in Thailand. Don't you want to be a missionary when you grow up? It's intimidating, right? I've been living in Asia this whole time, and this tall American is asking me this question. And so I would respond, and I adopted the Thai way, and I'd smile and nod and yeah, take, take a prayer card. Have you had a piece of candy? You know, and Because the answer that I would have given at that point was no. Not because I don't love Jesus, not because I don't like Thailand, not because I don't enjoy being near my parents. That's not the case, but I struggled in the area of surrender. And you say you recognize that at a young age. I mean, 10, 11, 12, you recognize that. You recognize a lot when your parents moved from Titusville, Florida to Bangkok, Thailand, because they surrendered to do whatever God called them to do. Well, man, I was under conviction. And, and if you're saved, you've been under conviction, too, at some point. Um, and and I was sit, I'd be sitting in church. We had plastic chairs in Bangkok. And I'd be sitting there. And whoever the speaker was, dad or another speaker, they would speak. I mean, the Holy Spirit just continue just to convict my heart about the surrendering. And when the preacher's your dad, I, I believe preachers already have the sixth sense. They can kind of sense conviction, like blood in the water with a shark. And they just kind of hone in on whoever. And you feel like they're preaching at you. Well, when it's your dad, it's like magnified 10 times. And I just wouldn't make eye contact come time for, for invitation. I'm not going to raise my hand. I'm not going to go forward. Um, but the Lord really impacted my life through friends. And there, there were just multiple friendships in Thailand. I shared, um, you saw in our video, Thailand, a country of 69 million people. The city I grew up in, 11 million people, 95% are Buddhist, 4% are Muslim. Less than 1% claim to know Jesus Christ as their savior. And that less than 1% includes your Catholics, Mormons, Jehovah Witnesses, all of that. Anybody that uses the name of Jesus kind of in their equation, they group them in there. So growing up, 99% of my friends were lost. And I realized that had my parents not surrendered, they wouldn't have heard about Jesus Christ. We don't know when they would have heard about Jesus Christ. 
And there was one friend in particular that had an impact in my life. His name is Ben's. His dad was a car salesman. Um, so he named his son Ben's for Mercedes. The older brother was Land for Land Rover. The sister was C for an Asian model car. And then the youngest was Porsche. Um, I just kind of help you remember names. And uh, Ben's came to church because uh, Temple Baptist in Titusville, Florida sent a mission team over to teach English and have a basketball camp. And Ben's came to church wanting to be as American as possible. Like he was wearing Converse shoes, hard to find there in Thailand, listening to English songs, watching American movies. He came in and he said, um, he, he started coming when this team came. The team left and he stuck. He kept coming every week. He was attending services more faithfully than some of our members at this point. He'd help us pass out tracts. He'd help me clean the church on Saturday nights. He captained our soccer team, which was a way we evangelized the young men is by hosting soccer camps, and we have a soccer team. Well, Ben's, I witnessed and witnessed and witnessed to Ben's, and maybe you've been there. You sit across from the table, and you've talked to somebody about Jesus Christ for a long, long time. I got to a point, I said, I don't get it, man. You, you know what we're talking about here in the Bible. You understand what God did for you. And he goes, you don't understand. No, the cocky missionary kid growing up. Over, no, I think I understand. I've been here since I was three. I'm going to, I mean, like I had all these answers. He goes, no, you don't. Your parents aren't Buddhist. Your grandparents aren't Buddhist. Your brother's not Buddhist. And he was right. At that point, I thought I would convict him of his sins and Jesus would save. And he thanked me for the clearest presentation of the gospel. But that's not how it works. The Holy Spirit convicts of sin. We allow God to work through us. Jesus saves, and we allow him to do the work. Amen. Well, I came back to the States at that point for graduate school, and I got a phone call from Ben's, and, and Ben said, man, you'll never guess what just happened. I said, what? He said, I got saved. And I was so excited. Now, the flesh side, right, was why didn't you get saved when I was there? Yeah. Right? I mean, come on. But the, the point is, it was 10 years between the time our friendship had begun until the time he had accepted Jesus Christ as his Savior. 10 years had passed. But if it takes you 10 years before you see one person come to know Jesus Christ, it is worth it. Amen. It is worth it. And the work in Thailand and in many countries, for that matter, it's slow. But it's worth it. Yeah. Even if we see one person come to know Jesus Christ, that's one less person that will be spending eternity in hell. And that's what we're going to do in Thailand is to go and tell others about Jesus Christ, what he did for them on the cross. The opportunities that we have, uh, Katie's background is in English schools, will welcome us in to teach about Christmas and Easter. Tell them what you believe about Christmas. We go, well, it's not really about Santa Claus. It's okay, just tell us what you believe. It's open door. Uh, and that's an audience, 300, 500 students at a time. We have soccer teams there that we host because it's hard to get men to come in to learn another language. They go, Thai is perfectly fine, and that works for me. And they're, and they're right. It does work just fine in Thailand. But you drop a soccer ball on the field, and they go, OK, we can, we can come. We, we'll, we'll, we'll come and compete. And, and, and as a Christian team, we, we, we want to be godly and have a good testimony. We also want to win, right? We want to we do well. We want to strive um, toward the mark. Well, that's, that's some of the things that we want to do. For the first few years, we want to partner alongside my parents. <clears throat> excuse me, as Katie learns the language. And uh, we want to work alongside them, helping with outreach and the ministries there. And then at the end of those three years or so, we want to reach into a community and plant a church there, recruiting nationals to go with us to help plant this new work. Because ultimately, our goal is to train nationals to take the church there. And then we can go and, and plant another church. And, and our, end, our end goal, and something we encourage you to pray for, we want to see Thai missionaries is what we want to see. Missionaries sent out of Thailand, going throughout Southeast Asia and beyond. Because there's, there's less obstacles that way. And, and I believe God can do great things. And that's really what, what our goal is to do. Pray for Katie as she learns the language. It takes time. Thai is tonal. So I, taught I'd, I said I'd teach you a couple Thai words real quick. Just to give you an idea of what it means to learn a tonal language. Thai, there's five tones. So I give you the word cow. And if you say the word cow, that means white. Cow means rice. Cow means the news. Cow means your knee. Kao means to enter. So a couple different meanings uh, within there. You have some double meanings with some other words as well. But um, those are your five Thai words. So you can come and visit us at this point and order white rice on your knee with the news. I mean, you are good, good to go <laughs> as far as that's concerned. The reason why Thai is so important to learn is because it's their heart language. 
And as a missionary, when you're traveling over, especially in countries where they don't speak English as well, we need to learn their language because the message we're taking is John 14, 6. Which I gave the reference to make sure it didn't seem like I was speaking in tongues at any point. But Jesus said to them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And this is what it's all about because there are not many ways like what Buddhism would teach, but that there is only one way. And it's not based on our works. It's through Jesus Christ and what he did for us on the cross. And that's why we're going to Thailand. And that's why I'd ask for you to pray. What is God leading you to do? Is it to be a missionary? Because I believe every church should have at least one missionary going to Thailand. We could stand to have a couple hundred more. And ultimately, you need to do what God calls you to do. But maybe it's a short-term mission trip. Maybe it's an extended trip. I don't know. How can God use you? As we've traveled, we're wrapping up deputation now, and I've come across people, and they come up, well, Brother Shane, you don't understand how old I am. I always respond, you don't understand. If you have white hair, you're balding. You have an advantage in Asia because they believe you're wise. And that's a nice thing. Automatically, you have respect. It's a culture of respect. And as a grandparent, you come to Thailand, other grandparents want to know, why did you trust in Jesus Christ? I understand why these children, these kids might do it, but why would you as an adult, why would you make that choice? It's an amazing opportunity that we have to take part in. And, and the last thing, as you consider what the Lord's having you to do, I'd ask that you pray for us. We need your prayers. You probably hear every missionary say that as they come through, but do not take it as a cliche because it's very real. We were up north, 12 hours up north from the capital there. We were two hours away from the nearest hospital. My brother was running around the house. He slid and fell through a pane of glass, slid his wrist. My parents wrapped his wrist up in a, in a towel. They jumped in the car and they started driving to the nearest hospital. It's two hours. You don't know what's going to happen at this point. The churches in the States didn't know that that had happened at this point. We didn't have phones up there or email at that point. But I remember distinctly that the missionary there, he sat me down. He said, Shane, would you like to pray? And I said, yes, I'd love to pray for my brother. And we, we sat down and prayed. And he told me this. He said, don't ever forget that there's churches in America that are praying for you. I think that's amazing. Amen. Because God knows. And when you, may, when you pray for your missionaries that are overseas that are serving, or they're on deputation, they're on furlough. It's an amazing thing how God can answer those prayers and that we're going to see soul saves and, and soul saved, and that's to your account because of your faithfulness and your giving, but also your praying to sustain the ministry there. So I encourage you, take a prayer card before you leave. Please pray for us, and then let us know when you're coming to Thailand. Send us an email, and we'll drive out to the airport and pick you up and maybe ride an elephant and eat some fried crickets or something. I don't know, <laughs> something along that way. Um, but we appreciate your prayers and appreciate your time uh, together. And as we go to the Lord in prayer, and I'll hand this over to Pastor. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for your word. We're thankful for the fact that you sent your son to die for our sins and that we are not worthy of it. Whether we're in America or whether we're in Thailand or, or wherever we are, Lord, we, we understand that it's only by your grace that we've been given this, this gift. Lord, I pray that we would use it. If those, those here that have accepted you as their Savior, that they would be willing to share it with others and tell others about Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray that you'd do a great work in this church, that you would see more souls saved, and Lord, more missionaries sent out. Lord, I pray that you... You would guide and direct us as we go. We're thankful for all that you continue to do, how you've sustained my family and many other missionary families. And Lord, I pray for this church here, Plantation Baptist, as they continue to reach the lost, that you would bless them. We pray this in your name. Amen. Pastor. Thank you, Brother Shane. Thank you, Katie blessed us, did a marvelous job presenting to us the, the burden and the call God has upon your life. How many have been to Thailand? You've been there? Anybody that's been there? One, two, three, four hands have been to Thailand. After that, who wants to go to Thailand? <laughs> oh, I sure do as well. Um, I, I want to close our service and have a have prayer. And I want to ask this question. Has God begun to speak to you about missions? You ever think about it? He nailed it. 
God, God will make it clear to you if God wants you to be a missionary. We'll all battle that surrender part. And then Katie made it pretty clear that God kind of works sometimes in increments there. He'll show you, but your responsibility is to be faithful. And if, if you've been thinking, and that's what God did. I remember when God called me into the ministry, and I knew for sure I was running from the Lord. I used to work night cleanup. I went to work at 11 o'clock, and I worked to about 2 o'clock in the morning, and my job was to vacuum floors. Don't tell Beverly, but I'm a good vacuumer. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> And I remember vacuuming those floors at night, and I was all by myself. And I'd begin to think about ministry. I'd think about messages. I'd think about preaching. I'd think about pastoring. And my major was radio and television broadcasting. I was going to be on CBS and do the games and all that kind of stuff. But in my heart and in my mind, God just would not relent. My freshman year at college, sitting way up there where Juan is sitting. No offense, Juan. God jerked on my heart. I couldn't take it no more. I walked all the way down that balcony, all the way down. I got, there was only room in the hallway, and I fell on my face, and I said, okay, I'm done. I quit. I surrender. Got up. Peace. Peace like I'd never known peace before. And I wouldn't trade my life for anything in the world anything in the world. It's a unique call to be called to full-time ministry. And, and if God's got that in your mind and in your heart, surrender to it. You won't regret it. You won't regret it. You blessed us great. And we will pray for you. And we will pray about partnering with you. And I'm sure that God's moving in our midst. So thank you so much. Let's pray and then we'll sing our song to go home. Hey, go ahead and make your way I was saying your name wrong. Why didn't you tell me it wasn't salmon, it was salmon? Tomato, tomato. <laughs> I know what you did. You got in that car and you said, that idiot don't know how to pronounce my name. <laughs> I, I'm in the ministry. I know how we talk about one another. <laughs> Heavenly Father God, you know our name. It's written down in glory. Thank you, God, for my name and the name of many folks in this room that's written in the Lamb's Book of Life, never to be blotted out. We've been blessed now two weeks in a row or two, two weeks back to back when we had missionaries. We had the Cruch Coast to Mongolia. We've had the Salmons now to Thailand. And God, both missionaries, I feel your presence just moving in our midst. There may be somebody in this room or some couple in this room that you've been touching them and talking to them about missions, I pray, God, that they would know what it is to surrender to that call. All of us are to be a missionary where we are. There's a unique calling for full-time missions, but as we leave this place tonight, we are entering the mission field, and I pray that we will take the name of Jesus everywhere we go tomorrow, being a witness for Christ. Bless us. Keep us safe going home. Bring us back on Wednesday night. And Lord, we sure love you. Thank you for being our great God and our great Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. 445. People need the Lord. Let's stand. Let's sing that great chorus. And we'll be dismissed. 445.
bless you are dismissed